God calls you blessed. Uh, the definition for the word blessed means having the ability. So some of the songs that you all have been hearing, amen? Amen. So we thank God. So now we don't mind putting them on, uh, on social media because they have been copyrighted. Amen. This morning I greet you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Uh, happy Palm Sunday. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday to you in the sanctuary. Happy Palm Sunday to you joining us via social media. Uh, so glad to have all of you all with us this morning. Amen. Amen. It, it takes all of us to do this. All of us in our respective places. Amen. Uh, this morning, I want to thank God for those of you all that's visiting us. Amen. We got some Amen. visitors in the house. Probably got some visitors joining us online. Amen. Can we give them a hand? Yeah. All right. Now y'all know how we do it. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you that's, that's here today. Amen. Each and every one of you. I, I, I feel that I serve a God that no matter what I put on paper, God knows who will be in the house. And so what God will do is that God will tailor his message for those that's in the house. So some of you all are in the house and I'm like, oh Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. That means you're going to change my message. Amen. But that's okay. Amen? Because he's in charge. Look at the person next to you and say, he's in charge. He's in charge. Amen. God is, God is in charge. God is always in control. Always in control. Amen? Amen. 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 This morning, I, uh, I want to mention to you that, that the Psalms of the Bible were not just, the Psalms of the Bible were literally, were literal songs that were sung. Yes. Amen? By the people of God. Yes. 
And Psalm 100 is known as a song of praise for God's faithfulness to his people. I want to put up Psalm 100 um, on the monitors. Amen. And uh, if you don't mind, I want you all to just, just, just stand and repeat it after me. Amen. As, as we go before uh, the Lord. And, and let's just read together. It reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? Singing. Uh huh. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his court with what? Praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. Bless his name. Last one. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You may be seated. Amen, 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 amen. Has God been good to you? Uh, has God been faithful to you? Uh, has God been kind to you? Has, has, has God blessed you when you didn't deserve it? Uh, has God answered your prayers? Has God healed your body? Huh? As God came through for you, yes. spared you, yes. opened doors for you. Yes. Huh? Oh yeah, so he's worthy, amen, he's worthy. And so what this is telling us is that every time we walk in the house, there should be something recent. Jesus, my God, my God. Recent. That God has done for you. Recent. See, you shouldn't have to think way back. Back when I was in high school, back when I was in middle school, back when such and such happened. No, 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 no. You may have gotten saved back then, but guess what? God just did something for you. God just did something for you. Look at the person next to you and say, he just did something for you. Oh, yeah. You know the breath you just took? He, he just took something, did something for you. I used to go scuba diving, and one of the things about scuba diving is that, so you got this metal tank on your back, and you don't know when you're going to run out of air. All you know is you do like, and it's, that's it. That's it. You're out of air. Huh? I've gotten a chance to be with some people in the final days of their, the final moments of their lives. And, 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 and what, what's so interesting is, is, is man never know when it's going to be the end. Man knows some of the signs. Man knows, here's the, the you know, they, they say about this thing called the death growl. Amen. But they never know when it's the end. We have one of the, one of our, one of our, uh, 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 there was a person that was uh, in this, in this uh, ministry and they asked me to come to the hospital because their mom was in the hospital and they made, the family made the decision to, to turn off the machines, mm -hmm. turn off the machine, turn off the ventilator. Well, I want you to know that that lady would live another three weeks, no eating, no nothing, no nothing. So the doctors may say, oh, well, you know, this is it. You know, this is it. But they don't know. It's up to God. Amen. God decides whether you will take that next breath. God decides whether you will take that next breath. So don't take it for granted. Amen. So Psalm 100 is a reminder for us to know that whenever you come in the house of the Lord, once you step in the house of the Lord, you got something to be thankful for. Amen. To be thankful for. And, and, and everything, you know, so we're going to go into our transition into our Palm Sunday message. And, and, and the, the Palm Sunday message is all about God loving you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus did some of the things because he loves you. Yeah. Huh? So no matter what your walk of life, no matter what you done did, no matter, no matter what labels may have been placed on you. Huh? No matter where he rescued you from. I don't know where he rescued you from, but I know where he rescued me from. Uh, I was an admirer. I was in a bad place. Uh, I know where he rescued me from. I was suicidal. I know where he rescued me from. Huh? <laughs> I don't know where he rescued you from. Yeah, I tried to take my own life. I don't know where he rescued you from. Huh? It didn't work. <laughs> Amen? I don't know where he rescued you from. But all I know is that he loves me. 
Can you look at the person next to you and say, he loves you? He loves you. And, and tell them also, he loves me too. Oh yeah, God loves you. God loves you. Romans, Romans 8.35, Romans 8.35, it, 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 God, God goes on to tell you that all of these forces, all of these forces, whether it's poverty, whether it's tribulations, whether it's whatever, because all of them has a grip. Y'all know poverty got a grip, right? Poverty has a force. You know, to break the force of poverty and break the force of, of famine and to break the force of, of peril, you know, it's a, it, it, it takes something more to break it. But God says, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Look at this. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, that means danger, Huh? Or sword? No. So, 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 so if, if none of these things could separate us from God's love, if we were to look at it and, the, and, 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 the, and to say, well, 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 what happened? Why is there a separation? It can't be on God's side. It has to be on our side. Y'all got me? God, God will always accept you. No matter when you come. No matter how you come. No matter where you come from, he will always accept you. Yeah, that's a good place to give God thanks. He will always accept you. You know, you know what's so interesting, right? There, 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 there may be certain things that in the Bible that we hear, and it sounds like it's not fair. But, but, but see, God is, it's not up to us to say whether it's not fair or not. Let's say the thief that's on the cross. He lived, he was a professional thief. He's a professional thief. He's on the cross next to Jesus. He has a simple conversation with Jesus. He receives it in his heart. And Jesus tells him, because God ain't gonna lie, he cannot lie. Jesus tells him, today, you will be with me in paradise. So that man got a chance to get saved and live a couple minutes right. And despite that, he goes to to heaven. So it's not up to you to decide who is qualified for Jesus. Who's living right for Jesus. No, that's not up to you. It's all up to God. God decides. Amen? God decides. And so this morning I, I, I want you to know that it, it's all about it's all about Jesus. It's all about his love for us. It's all about his love for us. You know, we, we talk about uh, Palm Sunday uh, being that, being the, the, you know, the triumphant entry. You know, I got a chance to take a look at where Jesus walked just to be where he was on that day, to do the triumphant entry. There were things that Jesus walked from, where, uh, other cities where Jesus walked from and things that Jesus did, but it was all for love, for love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this morning, we're gonna talk about the triumphant entry this morning, amen? Uh, this morning, we wanna talk about the triumphant entry because uh, that, that, that's, that's so important. Uh, the triumphant entry uh, was that it's the, it, it occurred on a Sunday that preceded Easter Sunday. Okay, so Palm Sunday preceded Easter Sunday. And, and, and that's the, the, Jesus decided that it would be on that day that he would make his, his grand entry. And in the past, we have talked about the disciples. We've talked about the walk. We've talked about the location. We've talked about the time. We've even talked about the donkey. Those of you all that's been here. But today we're going to talk about the crowd. We're going to talk about the crowd. Amen? And so I want you, I want you to repeat something after me. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to comprehend and receive what the Holy Spirit has to say. Amen. This morning, God wants to speak. This morning, God wants to speak to you. Jesus never minces his word. Everything that he does is intentional. Every word that he speaks is intentional. He speaks words that penetrates your heart. 
He speaks words that only you would know that the meaning of those words. He calls out your name. Anybody ever heard their name being called out? Yeah. Calls out your name. Because he know you by name. He knows you by name. He knows everything about you. So he knows when we need to be encouraged. He knows when we need a, a, a little boost. He knows when we need a pick me up. Last week, Ashton Edith brought a word that you hardly wouldn't hear a word like that in church about grieving, about mourning, you know, uh, because they always talk about the end, what, what happens after. But then we have to mourn, we have to grieve, we have to deal with, with the effects of, 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 of losing our loved ones. Because see, God knows what we have need of. If you missed that word, I please, I want to ask you to go back and hear that that word again. Pastor Edith did a, did a great, a great, a great uh, uh, sermon. So this morning I want to, I've I, I, I ministered the triumphant entry uh, from Matthew. I've ministered it from Mark. Today I want to come from, from, from John, from the book of John. Could we turn in our Bibles to John 11, uh, 55. We're going to start at John 11, verse 55. And here I want you all to understand, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you all already, we're going to be talking about the crowd. And so I want you to understand the makeup of the crowd. In order to understand the makeup of the crowd, you have to understand the time that this is happening, when this is going on. Amen. So this takes place just before Passover. And I want you to understand what Passover means. There are some of us in the room that we live in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. And the Jews, they are very, 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 very strict, very rigid, very disciplined. And when it comes to their, their seasons, their Passovers, their, uh, their uh, uh, Sabbaths, they take it very, very, very serious. Uh, as a matter of fact, my sister, Pastor Edith, was at my house uh, 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 last week. And Pastor Edith, uh, and it was, I don't know what it was, it was their Sabbath, something like that. And uh, uh, my neighbors, they know me and my wife for, for, for being that, that, you know, we will understand what their, you know, their, 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 their Sabbaths. And so uh, some, one of their kids had left a, a door open or something that needed to be turned off. So Pastor Edith, they came and, and, and Edith said that she's my sister. And they said, well, you know, my, my, my wife, it was two weeks ago, my wife had recently had oral surgery. My wife was in the bed, Pastor Edith was just visiting. And, uh, and so Pastor Edith went to their home and, and turned off whatever it was, was that needed to be the microwave. Thank you. It needed to get turned off. So I want you to know that, past, that the Passover, it's a major Jewish uh, 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 festival uh, uh, that, that commemorates the liberation of the Jews. The liberation of the Jews from, I'm, I'm sorry, the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. And there were some things that happened, and it lasts about seven to eight days. The Jews, they are so rigid, so disciplined about it, that they have certain foods that they eat. And so what they'll do is they'll empty out their cabinets of the existing foods that they have, because they know that on this day, I'm supposed to only eat this. On that day, I'm supposed to only eat that. By the way, even their pets, y'all heard me, right? Even wow. their pets. Wow. Yeah, they changed the diets for their wow. pets also. Okay, and so and so 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 here it is, and I want you to see this. It reads in verses fifty-five. So so this is just before Passover, and before Passover, I said before Passover. So watch this now, and and you they they knowing that just before Passover there were some things that happened way back to their to their family members. Okay, back in Egypt, and it's depicted in the books of Exodus, Numbers, and, and Deuteronomy. You know where they were told to put blood on their on their the, the, on their doorposts, and and the, the death spirit came, and, and there were some folks that were not ready, and and and, and God took that people from there, and and, and and they they left, and and they they crossed the Red Sea, and 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 a whole lot of other things happened. So God delivered, right? It showed God's 
deliverance. Amen? And so, but I want you to see, so, so, so in the Jewish tradition, they constantly commemorate that time, that season. Uh, they don't want to forget. Amen? Because it's important that their, their children and their children's children know, just as we need to tell our children about how God has delivered. We need to tell our children about how we made it. We need to tell our children, of, you know, we, we just can't be quiet about certain things. Because if we don't tell them, their friends will not tell them. That's right. So we have to be the ones to tell them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mama thought she was going to go out of her mind. <laughs> God bless mama with this job. God bless daddy with this job. Yes. Uh, yes. Daddy didn't have the qualifications for this job. Uh, mm. We need to tell our children. Verse 55, and watch this now. And it reads, and the Passover, and the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Y'all see how serious they took this? Now, we're going we to be right before God. We also know that some of the priests, not the regular people, the priests that went before God that wasn't right, they did not exit the temple alive. So if we're going to do this thing right, we're going to purify ourselves. We're not going to play with, 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 with God. Watch this now. So a lot of them, a lot of them came to be before Passover. Verse 56. Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think that he will not come to this to the feast? Huh? This this they, 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 they're saying this on the inside, okay? And so now I want you to, to, to realize something, because there, there's something that was going on here. Uh, uh, Jesus knew that they were seeking after him to kill him. Now, and, and, and so here it is, the folks, they go to church, but they're not satisfied with what they're getting in church. They want something different in church. So that's why they make this comment. Look at the next verse. Now, both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, that he should report it, that, he, that they might seize him. They wanted to get Jesus. Jesus, Jesus was, was coming and messing things up. This Jesus was coming on the scene with the, with the new theology. This, uh, this Jesus was, was causing the, you know, uh, uh, something within our churches that we don't like what's going on. We're losing control in our churches. So, so the crowd is beginning to grow, and, and the crowd is beginning to grow because the crowd is, 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 is after something. The crowd, they're in the church, but they're not, they, they want something else. They want more. Have you ever been in, in life and going through things, and, and, and it's like it's not enough, and you want more? So that's what the crowd, the crowd was like, we want more. Jesus. Is that anybody in here can see, see, say, say, we want more. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, yeah. Easter, Easter is coming, but, but you want more. You know, you, 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 you're not content with your life. You're not content with, with the way things are going. You, you, at the place in your life, but you want more. Yeah. Huh? Jesus. You're looking at things happening all around you, but you want more. more. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are times we'll take the word of God and we, we minimize it. There's a scripture that says godliness with contentment is great gain. And that is true. But that doesn't mean that you have to sell. You can go before God for what you want. Amen? Amen. There was a, there was a, uh, during the, the time when the, the lands were being distributed among the, the, the various tribes of God. And, 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 the, and depending on the number, the tribes, they, they, that, that was the amount that they got. Well, there was this one group, this one tribe that said, we want more. We felt that you didn't give us enough. We want more. I think it was the tribe of Benjamin. We want more. And they got more. Because ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and shall be. Always remember that, right? There, uh, the, the, the scripture under that, everybody knows that scripture, but you got to remember the scripture under that. The, other, the scripture below that says, for everyone that asks, receives. Receive. Receive. For everyone that asks. Amen? 
All right, let's let's, let's keep going because I want I want you to see. So 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 here it is. Jesus Jesus said that I come that you might have life and life what more abundantly. So Jesus didn't come for you to have the religion. Jesus didn't come that we may gather in a in a social atmosphere. Right. Jesus came that we might have abundant life. And so that's what this, this, this thing is all about that's, that's happening here uh, uh, on this day. I want you to know that, that there is something so beautiful about what Jesus is doing. And I want you to see the triumphant entry in the midst of him knowing that there are people that's after me, that they want to kill me. As a matter of fact, I shared with you all last week that they also wanted to kill Lazarus. Y'all remember that? Yeah. They wanted to kill Lazarus. Yeah. The man died. The man, Jesus resurrected the man, and yet they want to kill him because he got resurrected. My God. My God. <laughs> Does that make any sense? No. No. We're going to go to John 12, 12. John 12, 12. John 12, 12. And this is the triumphant entry. This is where we want to go. We want to get to the crowd. We want to talk about the crowd. Don't follow the crowd, y'all. Right. Don't always follow the crowd. Huh? There are people in the crowd that got, you know, motives that, that, that may be different from yours. Don't always follow the crowd. If you follow the crowd, they'll lead you somewhere. And when you end up, you're like, wow, how did I get here? You're following the crowd. All right? So, so here we go, 12, 12. The next day, a great multitude had come to the feast. Uh-oh. A great multitude, a great multitude. Yes, yes. Earlier it says that many people had came early, right? So everybody's coming to Jerusalem. Everybody's coming to Jerusalem. As a matter of fact, in the Jewish culture, you, you, you have to belong to a synagogue to go during Passover. But during that time, to have everybody to come, what they'll do is they'll open their doors. They'll say, if you don't have a, a uh, you know, anywhere to go for, for high holy worship, our doors are open. You can come here. Okay, and so, so, so I, I, I say that because now all of a sudden, all of the folks that may not have necessarily been going, everybody wants to go somewhere to church. And there ain't nothing wrong. Jesus also accepts the folks that may only come to church on Easter. That's the truth. All right, let's 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 keep moving. Yes. Because that's not my point. Okay. <laughs> Verse 12. The next day a great multitude had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was what? Coming, Coming to Jerusalem. Yes. Keep going. They took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Can I see y'all palms? Everybody got a palm? Yes. Everybody got a palm? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. You know that my, uh, my, my usher at the door, she was in the spirit. She gave me one as I was coming in and I didn't know that God would want to use it. Amen. I didn't know that God wanted to use it. Amen. Because it goes on and it says, Hosanna. Let's read that together. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Amen. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to honor. They wanted to honor. See, whenever you're going to go before the king, you have to show reverence. You have to show reverence. You just can't go any old way. That's right. Can I tell you something? That your worship will qualify you to get before the king. Your worship will get you before the king. Huh? The, the, the thing you you may say I don't I don't have nothing I don't I don't have nothing so that means that none of us have an excuse for why we can't go before the Lord. Uh, you don't have to have the right clothes. You don't have to have the right amount of money. You don't have to. I had this I had this minister that we had invited. I had never seen this guy before. This, uh, uh, I, you know, it was recommended that I invite him to my church, and, and, and you know, you know, you make certain mistakes as a, as a young minister. This was our first year in ministry, and uh, so I invited the, the, the minister. I sat with him, trying to feel him out and talk to him, and he's going to get behind my pulpit, and he starts telling my, my, my people, 
God's people, I'm sorry, God's people. Okay. So I was telling God's people that if you want this blessing, that you got to give 300 and something dollars. Wow. And then when you saw that, it, it, that, 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 that then he reduced it. Then if it, well, 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 God will still bless you if you bring 200. God will bless you if you bring 100. God will bless you if you bring 50. No, we don't do that in this church. We don't do that in this church. That was the last time that you were coming in this house. Because I feel that God have you all on a special diet. Oh yeah. God have you all on a special diet. And so it's his word. And you and, and my word, Jesus says that, that my that my word that they are spirit and they are life. They're life. So when you eat God's word, you're taking in life. Amen? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let the weak say, I am strong. In God's word, it gives you life. It, it, before God is the only place that you can go and you can be weak. And while you wait on the Lord, and he will encourage you. And he will strengthen you. And he will give you power. And he will bless your name. He will bless you. He will bless you. He will heal you. On your knees. Jesus, Jesus. A friend of mine sent me something this week, and uh, it says that that uh, that, that God had, had designed the the first uh, uh, cell phone. And I, I know I'm gonna botch this up. I didn't get a chance to, to read it, and I was like, Oh my God, this is so good. And as I read it, it, it goes something to the extent that that whenever you call Him, whenever you call on Him, whenever you call on Him, He's always there, and that He'll answer whenever you call on Him. I was like, wow. And he was like, the, 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 this quote goes on something to say something about you don't need you don't even need to have a have a signal. You don't even need to be able to have a carrier. You don't even need to have none of that to get in touch with God. All you gotta do is get down on your knees and say, Jesus! Jesus. That's all you gotta do. We're gonna jump down to verse 17. Because I still want to get to the crowd. Mm. Therefore, the people, verse 17, thank you. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised, and raised him from the dead, bore witness. Oh my God. So this is kind of interesting. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, there were people there. You know, there were people there. Uh, you know, like how people be knowing your business, yeah. like you know what happened in your family, and sometimes they come just to see how you gonna deal with this, how you gonna deal with that. Uh, so, so some of them it came, <laughs> some of them were were in the crowd. Uh, let's see what what, what what he's gonna do. All right, uh, and next next verse. For this reason, the people also met him because they had heard. What he had done, uh, when he, that he had done this sign. In another version, it says this miracle. It's amazing. It, this here it says a sign. It says a sign, a sign. Why do you call it a sign when it is a miracle? Why do you call it a sign when it's a miracle? I don't want to get ahead of myself, but God did that because there was something that He wanted to overshadow. Yeah. The religious thing of the time. Okay, so if you're going into a town and there's this huge sign and it's flashing, 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 extra, extra, read all about it. Jesus resurrects Lazarus from the dead, but you were coming to Jerusalem for Passover, but guess what you're going to see? You're going to see that sign. Oh my God. Jesus going to be there. I want to be there. Oh my God. I'm going to that concert because I know so and so going to be there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes. See, I got to put it in that vernacular for yes. you all. Okay. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. For this reason, these people also came because they had seen. They had seen what he had done. They had seen what he had done. So again, again, they, 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 uh, 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 the, 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 let's just finish this. Uh, verse 19, and I just want you to see 19 and 20, then we're going to stop. The Pharisees therefore also said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Remember, they had their plan, right? They had their plan, and their plan was we're going to catch him, we're going to seize him, we're going to stop this Jesus business, this dull as Jesus 
Jesus, Jesus, stop. We're going to stop it. Huh? Nobody can stop Jesus. I remember the team that used to sing the song, Go Jesus! You're the greatest! <laughs> I just love that. Amen? Go Jesus. Oh yeah, nobody can stop it. But look, and then they, they went on to say, look, the whole world is gone after him. Oh yeah, they came to your church and they were not satisfied with what they saw at your church. They were like, is Jesus going to be here? Is Jesus going to be in this church today? Is Jesus going to be in this church today? Huh? And that's, that's an interesting thing because Jesus is not in all churches today. He's not in all churches today. Because hmm? there are some that won't let him have his way. There's some that's all about programs. But God wants to be the superstar. I stand before you, it's not about me. It's all about him. Amen, it's all about him. It's all about him. So, so in this crowd, there are some that want to kill Jesus. There are some that want to kill Lazarus. Huh? There are some that came for the, to the, the, the Passover. Huh? That's Jews. Let's look at the, see, give me the next verse. Because I want you all to see this. Now there were certain Greeks, Greeks, Greeks among them who came up to worship at the feast. So some Greeks, some foreigners came also. Huh? Some, 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 some that saw Lazarus came. But all of them, in two, in two locations, in verse 18 and in verse 12, it says, they came because they heard. Say, because they heard. Because they heard. We want to pause for a minute on the crowd, on the crowd that, that heard. Uh, so, so don't forget now, here it is, Jesus wanted that this, this Passover will be different. This Passover will not be like the other Passovers that you all had. When you all came and you all ate certain foods and you all did certain things and you all read certain things and sang certain songs. It's like, no, this one is going to be different. This one is going to have something that none of us had. So here it is. Jesus makes his triumphant entry. But before that happened, just as, just as, as, uh, uh, as John was a precursor that came before Jesus, Jesus used Lazarus, the death of Lazarus, to advertise that I am the resurrection, and I am the life. He that believeth, I'm going to say that one more time, he that believeth, no, no, not, not, not he that qualified, huh? not he that paid tithes, not he that served in the church, he that what? He that believeth in, in me, though dead, my shall God, live again. My God, my God. He that believe in. Yeah. If you're in the hospital, all you got to do is believe. Yeah. If you're dealing with sickness, all you got to do is believe. Yeah. Huh? If, your, if your life is all jacked up like my life was, all you got to do is believe. Yeah. 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 Mm? And he'll come in. Yes. Make everything all right. All you got to do is believe. Oh, yeah. So Jesus wanted to bring a different theology on the scene. Because things needed to, to be different. God knew what we had been dealing with. You know, one of the things that's so interesting is that Jesus knew that as long as, 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 as time continued to progress, Evil would get worse and worse yes. and worse. Yes. So I need to give my people something else. I need to give them something better. He had this from the, the plan from the beginning. And the plan was to resurrect you and to resurrect me. I intentionally showed you all the different types of folks in the crowd to show you that it doesn't have anything to do with your qualifications. You a Greek? Yeah, Jesus wants you. You a Jew? Yeah, Jesus wants you. You're Hispanic? Yes, Jesus wants you. You're Bahamian? Yes, Jesus wants you. You're Bahamian? Yes, Jesus wants you. You're Jamaican? Yes, Jesus will take you. You don't have to be Jewish. 
Jesus. Don't have to only be Jewish. Yes. I'll take you. I'll, you. I'll work it out. I'll you. take you. That's and I'll work it out. So all you gotta do yes. is come. Jesus. All you have to do is come and believe. Yes. All you have to do is come and believe. Last week we were we were we were looking at Lazarus, the people that that, that, that came in and, and at the time when, when they wanted to get rid of, of Lazarus and they came and because of what they saw, what they had heard, what they had received, and they saw this whole thing played out where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And you know what's so interesting is whenever uh, uh, ministers are doing a funeral as they're doing their procession that's what they say as they walk through the crowd you're in the midst of death the person that's in the that's in the casket there they they, they they went on to be with the lord but in the crowd the crowd needs to know that jesus he's the resurrection and he's the life he's the resurrection and he's the life because they need to know that there is life after this spot. There is life beyond this spot. There's life beyond that spot. Amen? And you have access to that life. So here are these folks that came and they heard. They heard about Jesus. Heard about what Jesus did. So if Jesus raised a man from the dead, show them Jesus can heal my body. If Jesus raised a man from the dead, show them Jesus can do this. So Jesus can do that. You know, one of the things that we do is that we, we, we for, for whatever reason, we, we, we do comparisons. We do comparisons, right? We say, if, 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 if the person can do this, then, then yeah, yeah, we, we think that they can do that. God says that with me, it's nothing, it's too, there's nothing too hard for me. There's nothing. This ministry was started on the principle that there's nothing too hard for God. So we're like in our sixth month in ministry. We're a teeny weeny little church, maybe about the size of, of the, the, the enough chairs in, in that column right there, the first column. And all of a sudden, uh, we, we, we're being told, hey, you know, there, there was this young man, and this young man used to be very active in the community, and he used to buy bikes for kids, and he used to do this and do that, and give away uh, tur uh, turkeys and, 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 and stuff like that. And so it was a really, really hard blow. So we were asked, could you all host the, the funeral? Oh, wow. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, God, we say that there's nothing too hard for us so this okay. we're not going to do this you you're going to do this god okay, right. you're going to do this so the lord would connect us with uh uh with new birth new birth said oh pastor you know we're so sorry you know for your loss you know we're going to open up our sanctuary to you Jesus. boom Jesus. another another somebody else came and hey pastor i'm so sorry they opened up and and, and i'm just seeing god line up everything god just line up everything and we would go up in there. I think that uh, the, 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 the old new birth, new birth, I think it seats over a thousand you all. Yeah. And we would have, there would be standing room only. Yeah. Now, here's this young, innocent, green preacher, me, standing in front of a thousand, wow. you know, over a thousand folks. <laughs> but God has a way, and I want somebody to receive this. Yes. God has a way of taking your little bit of faith and put it inside of whatever it is that he does and he cranks it up so that you can get whatever breakthrough you need in your life huh? so that's what he'll do and that's what god did for us and i was like oh god you did that because i knew i was like man i can't do this this, this was not me god that was you I still don't even remember what I preached, y'all. <laughs> Honestly, I still don't remember what I preached that day. But all I know is that God, the yes. people were ministered to. Yes. The people were ministered to. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. This wasn't even in my notes. So, last year, you all knew that my dad passed away. And uh, what's so interesting is the mother of the young man... Uh, when that happened, she was just devastated, just seriously devastated. The mother of that young man, she would come to me and she said, hey, I heard that your father isn't doing well. Dad is still alive. She said, your dad isn't doing well. 
and she says, you know, I know you guys have expenses and you guys have this and you guys have that. And so she says, I need you to meet me at such and such. So I went and I met her. And I was like, I wonder what, what what's going on? Uh, I thought she was probably gonna cook something for dad. Uh, but instead, the lady gave me $500. She said, take this and tell your dad. She, she said, take, use it for whatever you guys need for your dad. And back then we were starting to buy things for my dad where uh, some of the bandages were like $65 for one. Okay, we never shared any of this with you guys. And, and, and we were like, hey, this is our dad, we gonna do it. If it, we gotta empty out the bank account, we just gotta, we just gotta do what we gotta do to, for my dad to have comfort. And I was like, God, you don't make mistakes. It was, why is it that God would use, that that lady would remember in the season when now when we have our issues, we were there for her and her family, and she would remember. So I, you know, it was so interesting, and I took it, and I went to Dad, and back then, Dad wasn't speaking much at all. So I went to Dad, and I told Dad, I said, Dad, and I showed him the money, and I, I, as a matter of fact, I put, I put a couple of the bills in his hand, and so we got a chance to see that, okay, you know what? Dad is still serious about money. <laughs> You know, so he would always tell my sisters, you know, show you to show him his money, you know, he wants to see see the money. So we use some of the money for uh, uh, for to buy things for him, but I had to put some of the money in his hand, you know, so that he would see, because he he knew. Uh, but but that that let me let me let me get off of that for a moment. But I want you to know, Jesus wanted to do something in this town. I am the resurrection. Yes. But what's so interesting is all the crowd did was the crowd heard. The crowd heard and the crowd came. The crowd heard and the crowd came. The crowd heard and the crowd came. So Jesus is speaking to uh, uh, there. All of us we remember the Sermon on the Mount when about the two fish and and, and, and the five loaves. Yes. My God. And we all remember the miracle that happened. But then there was a crowd that was with Jesus, and they heard Jesus speaking from the first day. And Jesus, and as Jesus is speaking, the sun sets, and Jesus stays there, they're there with Jesus. The next day, they still stay with Jesus. To the day two, Jesus keeps giving them more. He, Jesus keeps blessing them. The next day, the third day, Jesus realizes, Jesus gives them some more. But then Jesus realizes, hey man, I gotta take care of these people. I gotta take care of these people. So there is a, a crowd that, that followed because they heard something. They heard, they heard, they heard. There are some of you all that are here because you heard. You heard him call your name. You heard him call you. You know, no, nobody comes to Jesus. You, 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 don't, you don't meander. You don't, you don't, you don't just, 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 you know, like a maze. You know, like life is a maze. You don't like go in a maze and then, oh, I end up at Jesus. That's not the way it goes. Many are called if you are chosen. Those of you all that's in here, God called you. God called you. And so that's why you felt the tugging on your heart. God called you. God called you. God compelled you. Yes. Huh? I, 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 and some of us, we didn't know what we, you know, what we were going to do. You know, we were out of our minds, but I must tell Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on, but I must tell Jesus. Yes. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. So these people, they came and they heard, they heard a, dis a, di a different theology. And, and, and the interesting thing about it is that God would never leave us disappointed. Never leave us disappointed. I want you to know that, that as a result of, of that triumphant entry, one of the things that, 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 that happened right after that, which would end up being so interesting, is that the, the level of belief in multiple towns. Y'all see it? So, so here it is, all of these folks come from different towns, different places, different nationalities, and they come and they experience Jesus. They experience Jesus. Yes. Like some of you all, you all have gone to, you know, to any, any anybody ever went to, to a certain concert and you you heard about about you know there you like the person's songs and so you went to that concert 
I remember the first time my wife and I, we went to a Fred, Con Fred Hammond concert, and Fred and I think uh, our Kirk Franklin was there. And we were, back, back in the day, we, 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 we got one of these seats that we were up in the bleachers. We were all, all the way in the back, you all. The thing that shocked me was that far up, we were able to feel the beat, feel the bass. Yes. So I, we were like, whoa, so this is how it is. The people got a chance to experience yes. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And as they left Jerusalem on that day, they would never be the same again. When Jesus comes into your life, he wants to do a triumphant entry. When Jesus comes into your life, it's a mark. And it's, it's an indelible mark that you never ever forget. And that's why we remember our testimony. You remember the day you got saved. You remember the day he touched you. You remember the day he did this for you. You remember the day he did that for you. He leaves an indelible mark. And every, every time that your way, that your faith wavers, you could go back to that moment. God, I heard you. I know I heard you, God. God, I know that was you, God. God, I know that that was you. I, that deep down in my knower, there, there's a place, there's a place on the inside of us. Amen? Uh, uh, the, even the Bible calls it that, you know, that, that, that God has hid within our, our earthen vessels, right? Something in our, it, there's a place uh, down on the inside of you that, 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 that God has designed it where he, it's, it's, it's only he can satisfy that place. It's, it's, it's only he that can satisfy that place on the inside of you. It's only God. And when he speaks, he speaks right there. And you know that you know that you know that it was God. This morning I want to challenge you all to, today to take your faith to another level because some of us have heard God calling us. Yeah. We've heard God calling us to another level. We've heard God calling us to greater commitment. We've heard God calling us. You don't just hear God for, for, for no reason. You hear God for a reason. You hear God's voice for a reason. And God, God loves you. Remember, he'll never browbeat you. He knows what you're going to experience. He knows what you're going to experience. I'm going to say that again. He knows the trials that you're going to face. He knows the disappointments that you will face in life. But he wants it to be like, all you have to do is say, as long as I got Jesus. As long as I got Jesus. At some point, we're going to lose our mothers. But as long as I got Jesus. At some point, we're going to lose our fathers. But as long as I got Jesus. At some point, you're going to be disappointed. But as long as I got Jesus. Jesus. Because with Jesus, he's going to make it all better. Amen? Let us pray. Can we stand our feet for a moment? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you today. We honor you today on, on this day, oh God, because Father God, you are the one Lord God, that have blessed us, oh God, with life. And not just any kind of life, but abundant life. We thank you this morning, oh God, for, for being, oh God, the God that sits high and, and you're the God that looks low. You're the God that's acquainted with each and everything that, that we deal with, oh God. But Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you made a triumphant entry into our lives, Lord Jesus. And Father, all we have to do to access that is to believe. To believe. To believe, Lord God. To believe today, Lord God. To believe, Lord God. To believe this morning, oh God. To believe, oh God, that you are able. To believe, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. To believe this morning, oh God. To believe, Father God where we can't see, where we can't trace you, to believe, Lord God. Father God, there are, there are some today, Lord God, that's dealing, oh God, with, with disappointments, oh Lord God. 
Father God, some that's dealing, that's in bereavement, Lord God. Some today, oh God, that, Lord God, that don't know how they're going to make it tomorrow. Lord God, we pray, oh God, for them. We ask you, Lord God, to, to do something special in their lives. We pray, pray for Pastor Greg and his family, Lord God. Pastor Edith, Lord God. Father, I pray, oh Lord God, for my sister Vanessa, Lord God, that's going to be having her funeral this week, Lord God. Jesus. Father God, that you would be with that family, oh God, that you would bless them, that you would encourage them, that you would comfort them, oh Lord God. Be with the family, Lord God. Lord God, let Pastor Greg's mom know that you don't make mistakes, Lord God. Help her through this difficult time, Lord God, and this difficult season, Lord God. Lord God, it's hard when a, when a mother loses a, a child, Lord God. Father God, as we stand today, Lord God, we are so happy. Father God, that we heard, that we heard, that we heard, Lord God. But more importantly, Lord God, you want us to do something with what we have heard. And so, Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning as you're standing, I thank God for, for, God, for what God is, is doing in our lives. We thank God for our, our, those that join us by social media.